In my philosophy class, my headmaster, Mr. Crumpton, told me a story. Chapter one. I walked down the road and fell down a hole. Chapter two. I walked down the same road, saw the hole, but still fell into the same hole. Chapter three. I walked down the same road and walked around the hole. And chapter four. I walked down a different road. The end. <laughs> Here is the philosophical meaning. In chapter one, my mind was in the deep sleep mode. Chapter two, my mind was in the daydream mode. Chapter three, my mind was in an awake mode. And chapter four, my mind was in a higher conscious mode. But I would like to add another chapter. Chapter five, I walked down the same road found out why there was a hole, and fixed it. <laughs> in this new chapter, my mind was fully alert and is in a curious mode. I wanted to find out things for myself. There might be something unexpected. I might even find a solution. It is fun. Long, long ago, when I was very, very young, I liked to find out how things work. For example, how can such a heavy piece of metal fly? What is inside the computer? And what makes a toilet flush? When I got a little older, I started to ask questions to find out about things behind the natural phenomena and our universe, like how do waves form? How do seeds know when to germinate? And what is global warming? And how do we stop it? I explored the worlds of Galileo Galilei, Thomas Edison, Isaac Newton and Albert Einstein. I'm interested in things that are not visible at first glance. For instance, gravity, relativity, and the quantum theory. I wanted to know more about all of these. At that time, I was thinking, if I had a time machine, I could go back in time to meet these famous scientists and talk to them. Later on, I found that we could travel to the future by either traveling very fast close to the speed of light, or by using a wormhole. But traveling to the past ties in with the grandfather paradox. The future is predetermined by the past, and therefore, we cannot change the past. If we were to, say, go back to kill our grandfathers, we would have never been born. As I got older and older, I read more about the modern scientists and realized, why should I go back in time to meet these scientists. I should look forward to meeting my favorite scientists and mathematicians like Stephen Hawking, Roger Penrose, Casey Simpson, and Eamon O'Brien. Life is like time travel. We could go forward, but there's no turning back. <coughs> I don't need a time machine for this. All I need is a bus to the city or an airplane to England. But I know clearly that there are many people who want to meet them. Why would they want to meet me? I know I need to work very hard and very fast to qualify as their students. I started off with accelerating my maths. Two years ago, when I was nine, I took the Cambridge International exams with the candidates who were six or seven years older than me. One of the big guys, who was almost double my size, asked me, sorry, I know I'm being a bit rude, but are you a midget? or having some type of growth delay? <laughs> and now, it is my third year setting the Cambridge exams, which are the year 13 university entrance exams. The other students are still six or seven years older than me, but no one thinks of me as a midget anymore, as my height is catching to the, up to theirs. They, I've reached their shoulders now. <laughs> Along, and also, in the past years, I've been helping them with math problems during revision classes. They all know me well. <laughs> Along with math, I'm also accelerating in other subjects like physics, chemistry, biology, and lots more. For I've found that the harder the level got, the more fun I can get from it. I can't wait to start my university challenge next year. How do I self-learn and at the same time accelerate my studies? and still achieve the highest grades? It's my passion, and it's my nature which is full of nosiness. 
From the very beginning, I had passion for all these subjects. I wanted to find out more. And I also knew that my dreams were to go and learn from my favorite scientists and mathematicians as soon as possible. They are all either professors at the University of Cambridge, Auckland or Oxford. I need good marks to fulfill their entry requirements and all this will help prepare my future research. So I set myself a target, to achieve the highest grades in all the exams. I work hard and also enjoy my work. Doing maths or investigating the science subjects is just like playing puzzles. It is challenging and fun. Every day, a new thought pops out when I explore a concept. The information from textbooks may not always satisfy my curiosity, so I try to work out or find out more about the related topics and the reason behind the concepts. Just like this complex number relationship, the book said z equals a plus bi, z equals r cos theta plus i sin theta, and z equals re to the power of i theta. But I was not satisfied with it. I proved it like this. It is much more fun than playing computer games. I normally work hour after hour without realizing the time flying by until my mum asked me to stop. In my 2013 science fair project, I investigated the new triple M milk bottle. I wanted to find out if this new bottle was really as effective as claimed. So I carried out the taste, light, and acid tests. The results of the taste and light test were positive. However, I found something funny when I performed the acid test. The triple layer milk bottle was not as good as the semi-transparent bottle when placed outside. The milk bottle had two outer white layers and one inner carbon black dye layer. It is probably this carbon black dye which absorbs heat faster than one without. This makes the internal temperature of the milk bottle higher. In this case, the milk in the newly launched milk bottle degraded much faster than the milk in the semi-transparent bottle. Although the science fair project has already earned me three awards two months ago, I haven't stopped there. I'm still testing it at home, checking the acid levels every couple of hours. I will keep working on this hypothesis until I can find an answer. Luckily, Professor Kaitha Simpson has kindly offered a guidance for me this summer holiday at her photon lab to verify my hypothesis. And taking the university maths course means I'll get to know Professor Eamon O'Brien better. I'm getting closer and closer to my dreams now. It's fun to be inquisitive, be nosy, stick to your passions, find out more for yourself. Quest is fun. <laughs>